Hello. Hello. Hi, welcome everybody um, to the React Meetup. Um, it's good to see so many familiar faces and some new ones too. Um, we've got a great schedule tonight. We've got three great speakers, um, Tom, Harry and Mike from Moo. Um, and um, I think we'll probably take a break between the second and third speakers to get more beer down us and, uh, and whatever pizza's left. Um, so please tweet, um, hashtag React London. Um, if you want to speak, we're not going to have a proper meet, meet up in December because it's silly season. Um, and so, but what we are going to do is have a, a drink up. Um, so one night in December, we'll all have a little free drink up party thing. Um, we'll let you know when it is. So, but if you want to speak at the next React Meetup, that's going to be in January. Um, please get in touch with Amy. Um, reminder about the code of conduct. Um, won't say anymore, but it's on meetup.react.london. And if anybody's anybody wants a job, we're always hiring. So, big thank you to Facebook for having us tonight. Um, it's much appreciated. Thank you very much. Um, and Tom is our first speaker. I can't see him. Ah, there you go. Um, come and take the stage. Thank you. Cool. That's like the halfway through the part. Let's not start there. Uh, there we go. Cool. Um, so I'm here to talk, talk about React 16. Um, I'm going to focus mainly on like the server-side rendering benefits that we've got since React 16 was launched. Um, I mean, React 16 as a whole would be quite a long thing to talk about, so um, let's jump in. So before I get on with that, I can do the standard like introduction slide. Um, my name's Tom. Um, I'm currently in my final year of my degree at, um, at the University of Kent, um, but I'm also working as a software engineer at um, a company called Holiday Extras. Um, you can find me on the, the standard Twitter, GitHub uh, places. Uh, so. So the first thing I want to ask, who is using React 16 in production at the moment? Um, who's still using React 15 in production? Um, the biggest uh, note for me, like when we were upgrading, is that React 15 and 16 are pretty much compatible. Um, there's not many breaking changes, and most of them are kind of outlying things, like core apps seem to work pretty much fine. Um, so you should probably upgrade today. Um, so the, what I want to do before we look at, like, I'm sure everyone's pretty familiar with like a server-side rendering stack. Um, so what I wanted to kick off with is a very quick run through of what React 15 did, and then we'll, I want to run back up that and then see what's changed along the way. Um, so we all imagine this scenario, right? Someone's requested the home page, and it's gone from their browser up to your server, and you've picked it up with whatever framework you're using. Um, render that app to a string. Um, so to decide which parts you want to render. That gets shipped back down to the client, um, along with the link to your client JS bundle. Um, oh, it's like sit, uh, this is when we just fly through the slides and we don't want to go back that way. Oh, well, we. Cool, and then we do a rat DOM render on the client and everything's hunky-dory. Um, so what's kind of changed along that way? Um, quite a bit. Some cool things have happened. So, like this thing is standard, right? This happens. This is outside of React's control. But at this time, like we're not rendering to a string anymore. Like we can render to these things called readable streams. Um, so, if we render to a stream, we're essentially rendering bits of the bits of our app down and shipping them to the client before, rather than waiting for like this massive app to render and sending it all the way down. And um, this is really good for like in decreasing your time to first byte. Like your browser can start processing what's coming in before the app's actually ready, um, which is really good, right? Like we can we can start processing fonts or CSS or any HTML that's before the for our main app before everything's ready. Um, what else? Sort of next. Um, so yeah, we're sending down a buffer stream. Like depending on what web framework you're using, we've got like Express has got this built in. You pipe it down and, and it's all ready to go. Um, so before we had React DOM render. Um, so now we've got this new, new exciting one called React DOM Hydrate, which um, there's not a huge amount of differences at the moment. Like they are, they're completely interchangeable. Like you could use, if you're using uh, Node streams, it's not a requirement to use Hydrate. 
but it's very much recommended that you do, and I'm sure moving forward there's going to be some significant work that will reuse the hydrate. The, we'll use the hydrate function a lot more bespokely to, to server-side rendering. Um, but it do, it's got some cool things that we'll look at in a minute. Um, so apparently I've decided to put a live demo in my first ever talk, so that'll be it's kind of a bit of a brave move. But um, what I wanted to do was look at... That's, um, so this is like what I talked about in the first. Does everyone see that okay? Like, is that zoomed in enough? I'm going to take silence as a positive. Um, so you can imagine you get, like, you've got this, right? You're, you've got Express that's accepting any, any route. Um, we're rendering some markup. We're rendering our React app to a string, and we're sending it back down to the client. Um, what I wanted to do a very brief look at is how much effort is this to change? Like, if I wanted to jump up to using node streams, like, how much, how much am I actually going to have to change my main app code to do that? Um, and surprisingly, it's very little. So you can, exp with, re um, with Express, you get this res.write option. Uh, so we can, we can probably just grab all of this bit here and put that in there. So that's now sending down to the browser. Um, so we've, the next part we need to consider is this React render to string option. So if we grab the render to node stream option, we can, this will return us a, write a readable stream. So if we get so at this point in time, like nothing's actually rendered. Um, it returns an unrendered stream. So uh, what we want to now do is start rendering that stream and sending the sending the bytes down. So we can do uh, res dot no, stream, stream gives us an option called pipe, which will send each byte into a function. Um, if we send it, to, if we give it over to the res object in Express, um, that will take care of all the sending for us. We don't have to worry about sending little bits down like it's just done. Um, something that we kind of we probably want to do is uh, we can pass it a flag called end and turn it off. And that basically means like when the stream's finished, don't just exit. Like I still want to do something with it. Um, and then we can just send down. So when we we can grab that end event and. Now it's finished. We just want to send the, the last bit of our markup down, uh, which we can just add on to the stream with. Uh, what am I doing? Why is that gone all funny? Um, and then the last thing we want to do is just finish our tell express that we're, we're done with that request. Um, so that that's in theory, makes the, the, the server work. I'm pretty sure that's just my linting. Um, so that's cool. I what I should probably have done it before I jumped into this was actually just show you this page because this originally this page was rendering to a stream, rendering from a string, and that's now working with a node stream um, with like this very base. Like you're not going to see that you don't have, there's nothing on here that's going to take that long to render anyway. But I'm sure you can imagine if you've got s massive style sheets, like it's good to get that to the browser as quick as possible. Um, you've also just got the client side change, which was in here. Um, so we're just using hydrate now, and that's it. That's the only difference if we swapped out render for hydrate, um, and that's it. Like we're using streams now in production. There's very little that you need to change to actually get to that point. Um, cool. So let's jump back to where I was. Is my phone going to sync back if I'm already presenting? Yeah. Cool. Um, so what's like the next big benefit of using streams? Like we've, we can see that we can get the first byte down, but what else do we get from using this? Um, something else is really useful is if the, if the network gets bunged up, like if you're sending lots of requests down, but the browser's queuing them up, it will actually send a pause event back up. So we, we know that we can pause that stream and wait, which means that our server's not under all this pressure all the time to be sending stuff, and we can potentially deal with other stuff, or we can... We, it means that under challenging conditions, like we're not necessarily just killing ourselves, like we're not waiting for stuff to happen. Um, which is quite useful. I mean, um, so there's quite a few things. Although streams are brilliant, there's a few um, certain cases that you used to be able to have with render to string that you can't necessarily do now. So if you've got um, some some module that's reading that HTML string and working out what CSS it wants to inject at the beginning, that doesn't work anymore, right? Like we don't we don't have the full markups. We don't have anything to analyze. So that's one edge case that we can't, that isn't necessarily workable with at the moment. And similar with anything that. Uh, anything that analyzes that markup injects into the head of your of your document. Again, same reason we haven't got the full DOM to, to inspect. Um, but I don't know how I personally haven't encountered that as a problem massively yet. Um, 
So the next thing, moving away from streams, what else have we got now? So um, something that's quite cool now is that like before, like you had to match your attributes, like your server and your client had to be identical. Um, otherwise, React on render would do a full repaint. Um, this isn't strictly true anymore, although like you should make them match. But there's edge cases where that might not be true if you've got timestamps that are dynamically rendering, like they're not going to be the same. Um, so what actually happens now is that it, React DOM, when you're using Hydrate, will try and reuse as much of the DOM as possible. So if you've got um, like this one little bit over here that's differing on the client, you're not going to get a full repaint. It just goes and reuses that, all the rest of the DOM and replaces that, um, which is brilliant. Like you're not, like full repaints aren't ideal. So um, what else can we do? We can actually, we're, not stri we're not stuck rendering just JSX, well, JSX. We're not stuck rendering one div anymore. Like we use, I'm sure many people have wrapped elements in divs or spans because you need to, you need to only return one element. Um, we can return lots of different things now. So we can return pure strings, numbers, and arrays of elements. This is my favorite. Like being able to return an array is really useful. Um, this really benefits on server-side rendering because you're, you're just reducing that payload. Like we don't have like, I don't know, 20 extra divs that we're rendering which serve no purpose other than to keep React happy, um, which is just a bit nicer. Um, so when, we, when we're talking about rendering text, before, if you just had em an empty text node, you'd end up with the top example where you have comments either side of it so that um, for React. Like now we just end up with this bottom example. Like we have hello world as plain text as we described it. Um, so this is another big one. Um, so apparently reading um, process.env inside node wasn't, isn't necessarily the fastest thing. Um, React did that, as far as I'm aware, kind of a few, in a few different places. Um, that doesn't happen anymore. It's read once, and it's remembered. So that it, it basically is reduced the size, the, the time it takes to load the, the, uh, the, the time it takes to load. Um, we've also switched over to roll-up. So we're now shipping single flat bundles. Um, I probably got this number wrong, but I think it's about 30% smaller. Someone might correct me on that, but that's what I read somewhere. <laughs> um, which is nice. We're shipping smaller client bundles. Um, no, I've, I've kind of got a few bits in here that aren't possible yet on this in server-side rendering, but are awesome and are pretty cool to talk about. Um, error boundaries. Um, I mean, everyone's heard of try-catch statements, right? Like it's the same idea. So we can catch components when they error and render alternatives to that, um, which is really useful. Like you don't want to necessarily like if, if you've built if your if your site's built up of loads of little components. Like if you've got like a live chat feature and live chat down, like that's a, like you don't want your whole app to fail. So it's it's nice that you can catch that and be like right, ditch that module or put up a message specifically about that. Um, it'd be awesome to see this stuff server side as well. Like I don't know where we're at with that, but that'd be really cool to see. Um, it's introduced a new lifecycle method to take advantage of that. Um, and a, a note is that it only catches its children. It doesn't catch itself. So it's in the render block that it catches. Um, what's next? So this is another awesome thing that, um, as far as I'm aware, is probably not going to happen server-side because the, the actual API requires a node, a DOM element. Um, but portals are really cool on the client. It's another really notable, notable part of the React 16 launch. Um, it basically lets you render in your render block rather than just rendering into that component. You can explicitly go like, when I render this, give it to inject it into this element over here. But I want to know about it still. So you've still got links back. So you know that when certain events happen and certain elements and certain attributes change. Um, so that's quite cool. Um, so that's I probably rattled through that very quickly. And I have a feeling I have. Um, I hope I wasn't too quick, but I just wanted to briefly run back over what we've looked at. So we kind of we looked at the current implementations. We looked at um, the new no rendering to node streams. We then looked at um, the hydrate. We looked at benefits for server loading, um, things that streams can't yet do, the differences between the client and the server now that don't have to necessarily be the same. So if attributes aren't in the same order, that's not a problem anymore. If things aren't necessarily the same, it will reuse as much as possible. Uh, we looked at the different return types that we have available now. We're not necessarily having to return a single element. The fact that we're using roll-up for flat bundles, error boundaries, and portals. 
Um, these are two brilliant resources that I used when I was learning about this stuff. The, obviously, the React.js blog is brilliant. But the, um, the article by Sasha is brilliant. Like, there's some really good stuff on there explicitly about the server-side rendering. Um, it goes into a lot more detail than I have about performance. Um, I definitely suggest reading it. Um, I think that's it. So that, I might have been very quick on this, so I apologize. <laughs> um, does anyone have any questions? Up where? Sorry. No, I can't see. Oh, right, yeah. So, yeah, if anyone's got any questions, come here. But, no. That makes my life a lot easier. So. <laughs> cool. Thank, thank you very much. <laughs>